good morning and welcome to Willow Hill this morning. Uh, very thankful to have each and every one of you with us. Our watchword for the week comes from Psalm 113, verse number 3. From the rising of the sun to its setting, uh, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Uh, Psalm 113.3. Uh, very thankful to have each and every one of you this morning. If you would, grab your Moravian hymnal, turn to hymn number two. If you can find it, I had trouble. <laughs> it's just right there at the end of all the liturgies, 201 pages in. Uh, so it'd be around 203. Uh, find uh, hymn number two. Let's stand together and sing together. Praise to the Lord Almighty. to the person on your right and your left, tell them you love them, glad to worship with them this morning. And you can be seated after that. God has been good to us, He has blessed us, and uh, very thankful this morning for the opportunity to come together to worship. It is always exciting to come and worship, and uh, God has given us such a beautiful day. It's clear, it's crisp, and uh, Almost a fall day, just before the fall gets here. Um, but very thankful for, for the beauty that surrounds us here at Willow Hill, and very thankful for that. This morning, uh, if you will look over at your announcements in the bulletin, and uh, for those of you who are watching online, I think they are being posted online. I think I've seen them at least this last past week. Uh, but... You can follow along. We're going to hit them really quickly. You can read them for yourself, I know, but uh, some things might just 
jog a memory. Uh, September is the month for small games for Operation Christmas Child. The donation box is in the vestibule. Uh, Happy Home Flavorings are for sale, and all the proceeds of that go to the church youth uh, to help them to do some things, and um, that is something that we need to work toward, I I feel, uh, that if there is anybody that you can invite, we need some more young folks in our church. We need to have somebody to lead and uh, to to mentor, and uh, we've got some, and we can use some more. I don't think you could ever have too many. Craft workshops on Thursday at 7. Choir practice right after service this morning. Uh, apple butter, cutting, uh, cutting and making September the 22nd. Be here uh, around 8 a.m. on the 22nd that is here uh, at the church bring you a knife and a bucket we put all this up here easy to get to right except for when I need to get in it (laughs) Um, but invite you to come bring your knife your bucket and uh, maybe even if you've got Apple slicer uh, or uh, apple cutter, we may need them <laughs> since we can't find what we're supposed to have here at the church. So um, please bring uh, all that you can. Homecoming Sunday, October the 2nd. There will be a covered dish meal to follow after worship, and everybody is invited for that. Uh, handbell practice is going to resume on October the 9th at 5 p.m. Uh, if you're interested in playing handbell, see Adam and let him know. Uh, Grace Moravian is holding a craft and, craft and vendor fair October the 15th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, our trunk or treat will be October the 30th at 4. And uh, we'll have a re- weenie roast and a chicken stew. Not everybody likes chicken stew, so we'll have a, you can roast you a hot dog if you don't like chicken stew. And uh, come out and have a great time, fun and fellowship. Uh, with one another. Christmas Bazaar is on November the 12th this year. Uh, The Bazaar and demonstrations will be from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Spaghetti dinner will be from 11 to 6. And I know that it says 11 to 6. I think last year y'all wound up starting, everybody coming in early and and starting a little bit. So, uh, but we'll try to do, we'll do the best we can to stick to close to times anyway. And our Thanksgiving Love Feast on November the 20th during the 11 a.m. worship. And uh, again, we are thankful to have each and every one of you here this morning. We just want to be, um, just be in worship. That's all I can ask today is let's be in worship together to praise and glorify our God and Heavenly Father. If I get a couple of ushers to come, we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and offerings, and uh, then we will be blessed by the choir. Let's pray. Father, we're we're thankful uh, once again to be in your presence, to be in your house, that you have allowed us to come and to worship. God, the world tells us that we're crazy. The world tells us that we're stupid. The world tells us that, God, we have nothing to worship. But I know what you've done for me. And God, I will worship you till the day that I die. I can never give enough. I could never worship enough. I could never praise you enough for what you've already done, much less what else you're going to do. So God, may we think about as we give this morning, God, everything that you have done and give accordingly. Thank you for the opportunity to worship Thank you for the opportunity to praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, and you can be seated. If you would, grab your Moravian hymnal this morning. Uh, once more, turn to hymn number 224. 224. And you can remain seated this morning as we sing, When Morning Gilds the Skies. May we praise his name today. Praise it together. Uh, for those of you who have been here or watching online, you know over the last few weeks we have come out of the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. And if you would, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to flip a chapter today. Uh, we have been talking about how that men were supposed to be the head of the home. We're supposed to be the spiritual leaders. We're supposed to be the spiritual guides of our, our house. And Amy told me this morning, she said that Noah said the funniest thing to her yesterday when they were out riding. And that was, she said, he told her, he said, you know, daddy's been preaching on man being the, the head of the house. 
But yet, when I was taking Layla out Friday night, he calls me and says, you do whatever she tells you and may keep her happy. <laughs> no, it was just not because you're not the head of the house. Y'all are not married just yet. Uh, you want to try to make her happy right off the bat. Um, and, and then you work on the rest of it together. Um, but I thought it was hilarious because it told me he was listening, number one. Number two, he thought I had contradicted myself. Uh, I will tell you, if, if your mother had known me the way that I am now, I probably wouldn't be married to her. She has grown to love me for who I am. But... Uh, I tried my best to dote on her all I could and do everything she said from the beginning and still do most of the things that she says because she's a pretty good woman. But nonetheless, I, I say that just to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. It feels like I have been pushing, 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 but one of the things that I see in this world, one of the things that I, I, I look when I look out and, and you, you're out and about, one of the things that it's easy to see is the lack of people willing to stand and say this is the truth this is the gospel we cannot waver from it and if we do there's consequences we live in a world where people think there is no consequences they have no consequences for their actions and there is a consequence for the action there is only two places to spend an eternity heaven or hell and I know there's people that's saying, he said that H word. We don't want, we want to think that it goes away for whatever reason, to make us feel better, to make us feel a little more comfortable. Let me tell you, hell is not going away. Hell is a place. Revelation tells us that there will be a second death to those who do not believe, and that death will be when they are cast into the lake of fire, never more again to see the presence of an almighty God. Well, that's a bit harsh. Well, that's why we're here. Working hard as we can, teaching hard as we can to try to share and to show that's not the place that was created for a believer. That's the place that was created for those who would not believe. For those that would believe, we are to work together. And men, it is our responsibility to set that tone. And if you're not setting the spiritual tone in your house, then we're not being the man that we're called to be. That's what I've said over the past few weeks. We get into chapter 5 of Ephesians. And the first thing, if you have a Schofield Bible, the first thing, the little subheading he has is the walk of the believer as God's dear child. Now we're not just talking about the man being the head of the house. We're talking about all believers. All those who profess to be a Christian. Those to believe, that profess to be more Christ-like. This is the way that we're supposed to walk. This is the way that we're supposed to do things. Do we stumble and fall? Yes. We do. Does that put a black mark on your record? Let me tell you, that black mark on your record, once it is confessed and given over to God, He wipes it away clean and clear like it never happened. I want you to know that from the beginning this morning. As we read chapter 5, verse starting at verse number 1, Be ye there, therefore followers of God as, as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes 
darkness. But now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful this morning to have your word, to have the guiding path that you give us. You have set a standard, and you gave your son to lead by that standard, by that example. And God, as we are called today to be believers, as we call ourselves Christians, help us to be more Christ-like. Not falling into the lusts of this world, not falling into the temptations of this world. Father, we bind Satan right now in the name of Jesus that he would get off our back and help us to see and to understand and help us to show your love, your light, to others around us. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Hide us behind the cross that your name would be glorified, that you would be seen. Amen. This morning as we look at this passage of Scripture, he says uh, that we are to be followers of God as dear children. One of the things that I can honestly say that I truly love in this world, there is nothing that brings me more joy than little children, infants. I love babies. I love talking to babies. I love talking baby talk. Me and them almost about on the same wavelength. And uh, I can understand by looking in their eyes what they're thinking. And I think that they can understand by looking in my eyes what I'm thinking. Uh, and you say, well, that's a little bit silly. It may be. But nonetheless, I love little babies because you will never see in your whole entire life anything more true, more honest, more faithful than an infant. You say, well, how is that? They have to depend on mom and dad. If we were more like infants, we would have to depend on our Heavenly Father to make sure we've done everything that we need to do. However, we have grown up and we think that we can take care of some things ourselves and we have been told time and time and time again, I know, that when I make a plan, God laughs, right? And that is true because I try to make plans. I try to tell God, God, it's okay. You can sit this one out. I can handle this. And I most time mess it up and have to ask for, Lord, help me. I've done, I've done stirred this pot and it's so bad. I don't know what to do with it. You say, well, how do you get that from just that first verse right there? We are supposed to be as dear children. I, I want you to know that this morning, if you're sitting here, <laughs> you had a mom and dad. You had somebody, a grandma, a grandpa. You had somebody that you always, throughout your childhood, that you looked up to. My grandma was my person that I looked up to. My grandma was the one that uh, I, I, I looked to for direction. Grandma was smart. Grandma always understood. I, I never thought mom and daddy understood the way grandma did, especially in my teenage years. Grandma knew everything because grandma would let me buy with things. I thought, oh yeah, she's great. But later on realized grandma wasn't just letting me buy with things. She would teach me with the things that she let me buy with. She would show me once I tried something and it was wrong and I, I realized that it was bad She'd say, now see, 
You don't want to do that again now, do you? She had a way of letting me do things and thought it was making me feel good, making me feel proud of myself because she let me do things. But when it would flop in my face, she also had a loving way of saying, you don't want to do that no more, right? The next time I try to tell you that it's going to be hard if you do it this way, will you listen? Sure, Granny. But I never listened. I was stubborn, hard-headed. I'll go ahead and tell you. No use lying about it. We need to be as dear children, looking unto God, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to Him for our understanding. We look to Him for our joy. We look to Him for our peace. We look to Him for our understanding. We don't look at one another. One another, as, as this body of believers here at Willow Hill, it is our responsibility to lift one another up. It is our responsibility to try to hold one another up, not to tear each other down. It is our responsibility to do those things and to walk as a believer should walk in Christ. But it is also our our responsibility to stay focused upon the Lord Jesus and what He has done for us and who He is and the light that He is to share with others as we go along on this pathway. It says in verse number 2, And we walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. As Christ loved us. What did Christ do for me? What did Christ do for you? What did Christ do for that sinner that's lost and undone? What did Christ do for the thief on the cross? He shed his blood for the remission of sin. That's what he done. So preacher, you mean we're supposed to give our life to somebody that doesn't believe? Yes. We are to love. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us. He loved us enough that he wanted to see us grow and to prosper. He wanted to see us to the point that we would have the ability to have eternal life in a place in heaven with Him, which He has gone to prepare. He gave His life so that we could live. It is for us to give our life in devotion to Him and the love that He has for us to share His light with others. There you go again, preacher, telling me i got to talk to everybody and their brother. I'm not trying to tell you you got to talk to everybody and your brother. I want you to know that if we will live Christ-like enough, you don't have to say a word to nobody. They will see it in you. Because when we are called to be Christians, we are, the Bible tells us that we are to be set apart. A new creation, a new creature. A peculiar people. We're peculiar, all right, but not peculiar in that way. If we're set apart, then people's going to see Christ in us. They're going to feel His presence when we walk into a room. One of the things that I love here at Willow Hill, I've had so many people that has come to visit over the years that comes to uh, whatever it is that we may be having. They said you can just start to pull into the property and you can feel the Spirit of the Lord. That's God shining through. That's because there has been some things that has been done right. It should be that way when people see us in everyday life. We should walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and gave himself for us uh, as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. The old man that I had inside of me was a vulgar person nasty full of lust with a desire to do nothing good my desire was to get what I wanted no matter who else it cost We live in a world that they think I should have what I want no matter who else it costs.
when God put a new man, new man inside of me. When he made me a new creature, he gave me a, a desire to love people. To want the best for them, no matter what it costs me. Uh-oh. How should I want the best for them, no matter what it costs me? Do you understand what you're telling, preacher? You're saying, no matter what it costs me, I should make their life better. Is that not what... God done for you and for me that He gave us His only begotten Son that whosoever would believe within Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave us the best of what He had. And He sent it to the earth. He made the Word flesh and the Word dwelt among us. And as the Word dwelt among us, praise God, He gave everything that He had right there on Calvary. He lived His life an example. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He never wavered. And because of that, when He went on that cross, when He was nailed to it, when they ran that spear into His side and blood and water came out, that is the cleansing power of what we have in our life today. We've got to be Christ-like. We've got to be like Him. And He sacrificed His only begotten Son so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. But doesn't this sound like us in, in today's world? In verse number 3, the fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Oh, but we've got people that is running ads and commercials that you want what everybody else has got. You want the newest, brightest, best thing. we got people running around on commercials, uh, men and women running around on commercials that are, that are scantily dressed. Let's go put it that way. We'll be nice about it. we got men kissing men on television screens we've got women kissing women on television screens that is not right that is not under no circumstances that goes against this verse of scripture fornication and all uncleanness that is unclean I hope preacher you're going to make some people mad I ain't making you mad that's what the word of God says if you get offended over that don't take it out on me take it up with God because that's what the word says Here's the kicker though. This is why we, have a, we live in a world that wants to change the word. If you change the word, it has a none effect. If you change the word, it has no effect. It cannot change you. Because you've changed it to be what you want it to be. We live in a society that wants to change everything to the betterment of their beliefs. To the easement of the way they want to live. It's not, it's not easy living a Christian walk. It's not easy talking a Christian talk. But he says, don't let the fornication, don't let the uncleanness, don't let the covetousness be once named among you as becometh saints. Notice that he's calling us saints right there. He's telling us that we're saints. I've had people, I said... Yes, I am a sinner saved by grace. But the Bible also tells me that I am a saint of God. Hallelujah. That'll make somebody want to pop her collar just a little bit. He calls me a saint. I'm unworthy of that title. But he did call me a saint. Goes on in verse 4. He, he starts out with just fornication, uncleanness, covetousness. Verse 4 he says, filthiness, foolish talking, or jesting which are not con uh, convenient, but rather giving of thanks. We live in a society that is filthy. We look and we've read and we've heard the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and you say, well, no wonder God wiped it out. Look at all the stuff that they was doing. Well, folks, you better open your eyes because the United States is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah ever was. You might look up and there'd be some fire and brimstone coming. God wouldn't do that to us. He loves us more than he did, he did them. Why? What are we doing for him? What are we doing for him? He left us here to protect what he had given us. He had us to here to watch over, to take care of. Why did he leave Adam in the garden? 
when the serpent came to Eve, he had Adam right there. Adam heard the conversation, I believe. There's no proof of that in the scripture. I think that Adam heard it. This is Kenny King 101. This is a two cent extra that won't, I won't charge you for. But Adam was standing right there and Adam didn't do his duty. Because God spoke to Adam and told Adam not to eat of that tree. God told Adam what to do. God, and Adam stood right there and let Eve partake of that tree. He didn't stop it. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. Yes, I love to say that it was Eve that committed the first sin. But was she really? Adam didn't take care of his responsibility. People today, we need to take care of our responsibility. We got a government that is a joke in the United States. Doesn't matter what party you pull for or party you don't pull for. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. We live in a world that is all about Satan and hate, hate and loathe the fact that Jesus is even mentioned. We live right now here in Ararat, Virginia, where I have told people, I said, I think this is the this is the buckle of the Bible Belt. And now I want you to understand that we go out today and we hear, you don't, you don't hear people talking about Jesus anymore. You don't hear people, why do you not hear talk, people talking about Jesus? Because we're so full of what Satan has blinded us to. We are so full of people that gets their uh, feelings hurt because of something silly. They get their feelings hurt over something that happened 200 years ago that doesn't matter today. It matters as fact of history. Was it wrong? You look in the Bible. The Bible tells us that there were slaves. And when you see slaves in the Bible, it's different than it is as to what we call a slave today. Their slaves were treated well. Their slaves were fed well. Their Slaves were made to prosper. That's why when their slaves got set free, when it was time, when their time was up and they got set free, they said, no, let me go back. Because they were treated with respect the way they should have been. Now, the slaves that we know today, wasn't that a way, and I understand that. I had nothing to do with it. You had nothing to do with it. There's not a one of us in here that's 200 years old or more. It may have been somebody in our family, but we can't control what our family's done before now. We've got people today that are asking, and, and I've said this over the last couple of weeks, asking for litter boxes to be put in the bathrooms. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen and heard of in my life. We've got people that don't know what sex they are. We've got people that are so confused it is because they don't have a foundation of anything to stand on. This scripture tells us to stay away from those kind of things. To stay away from it. It tells us not to be in fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, uh, filthiness, foolish talking. And that's what those things are, is foolish talking. Uh, we, we live in a world that as uh, verse number 5 says that... <laughs> For this you know that no whoremonger or unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let me tell you, if you're running around with a chip on your shoulder about something that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 2 minutes ago, or 2,000 years ago, if you're running around with a grudge in your heart for those things, the kingdom of God is not yours. Uh-oh. What do you mean, preacher? This says they have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. You don't have it. Why? Because you've got hate and malice in your heart. I wish that we could show the, the, those that are out here that are lost and undone that we love them. 
Well, preacher, you've done talked to and said our government don't have any sense. You've said this and you've said this and you've talked about how that those people that are complaining about slaves, don't, they don't have any rights. They still deserve love. I'm not saying not to love them. I don't agree with them, but because I don't agree with them don't mean I can't love them. I think it's silly, yes. And I think that it's time somebody stood and said, Hey, y'all need to wake up. Those of you that think that you were born male, but you need to be a female. Those that think that you were born a person, but supposed to be in a cat. Those that may have been a dog, a pig, a bird, a fly. don't matter. I don't care. Jesus died for you the same way he died for me. He loves you and you have an opportunity to come to Him but you're going to have to turn away from that old person that you once was and become a new person. Let no man deceive you in verse number 6 with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We have forgotten the ways that when the children of Israel turned against God in the Old Testament, when he turned, when they would turn away from Him and they would look at the idols and they would make their golden images and when they would do those kind of things, what happened to them? They were captured by somebody. They were held in captivity. They were enslaved themselves. God even allowed His own people that He called out, those people that He said, I will give you a new place. I'm going to give you a land that dwells and flows with milk and honey. Those people, He let to be enslaved 400 years. Stomping through the mud and making bricks. He allowed that to happen. Why did He allow that to happen? Because they needed to be broken just a little bit. You cannot be broken until you hear the truth. Because until you hear the truth, you don't know what's going on. You say, well, preacher, you ain't, you ain't talking just to us. I'm talking to every person this morning. I'm talking to Kenny this morning. You know why? Because I'm not perfect. I don't stand before you claiming to be perfect. I stand before you claiming to, to understand just enough of the Word of God to be able to share and to show. And I want you to understand that this morning, that sometimes in verse number, um, verse number 8, it says, We were sometimes in darkness, but now we are in the light and walk as children of the light. We've got to walk as children of the light. We've got to shine the, the God's light in other people's lives so that they can see. If not, they don't have a chance. You cannot come to know Christ until you know that you're a sinner to begin with. It won't happen. And if it does, it's not true. How can you say that it's not true? Because if you come for somebody other than the drawing of the Heavenly Father, the Scripture said, that's the only way. If you come any other way, then it is not true. And you're lying to yourself. And you're lying yourself into a hell part of eternity. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. One of the things that I love is the fruit of the Spirit moves. And we want to be happy and we want to be nice to everybody, right? And I'm not trying to say don't be nice. But I am telling you, as a church body, we have got to stand. As a church body, we have got to make sure that we're sharing the light of God's love. We cannot be one person here and somebody else outside. We've got to be the same. We've got to be fully dependent upon God Himself to get us through each day. It is not by my own strength. It is not by my own help. It is not by my own desire. It is not by my own will that I live every day. It is by the Word of God and the Christ who strengthens me to make it, help me and make me get through each day. It is not of myself. But praise God, He put a new desire in me, that new man. He wants all that God has to offer. And I stumble and fall from it. And as we come down to verse 11, well, 
well, verse 10, we're going to read verse 10 down just a little bit. Proving uh, what is acceptable unto the Lord and having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, rebuke them, stay away from them, balk on them. When you see somebody that is going against the Word of God, you can tell them, it's okay. They're not going to like it. And they're probably not going to like you very much for it. However, if they see just a little bit of light, a seed gets planted. Just like Elizabeth was talking not too long or this, this morning, that a little seed gets planted and, and there's some light and that seed gets sown. Oh, praise the Lord. When that, that thing starts to take a little bit of root, it spreads the darkness so that the light engulfs it. Then they realize where they've been. They realize that they need something different. For it is a shame in verse number 12 even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. How do you measure darkness? By the light. You cannot measure darkness without light. I walked into, uh, this may be a little much, but it'll be okay, I guess. I walked into a, a, a bathroom the other day, and, you know, everywhere in this building has remote lights. So I walked into the bathroom, I flipped the door open, and I walk on in, and all of a sudden the door shuts and no light cuts on, and I'm standing in the middle of the bathroom, I'm thinking, I know where most everything's at, but I don't want to walk into a wall. Seen just enough light coming under the door. I finally turned and made my way back to the door. Opened up the door, flipped the light switch on. Just a little bit of light can show you a path to where you can see more greater things. If we can share just a little bit of light, with those that's lost and undone around us. You say, well, what does that have to do with you talking about the man being the head of the household and being the spiritual leader of the household? I am here to tell you that this is a walk of a believer together. Men, it is our responsibility to set this up in our house. Women, it is your responsibility to walk along with us to strengthen and to gain. Children, it is your responsibility to hear these words and see the fact that mom and dad are trying to follow the will of God and stand with us. Because every time we get somebody to stand, it makes us stronger. And the world will quit winning. Satan will quit winning. You say, well, I just don't know if Satan will quit ever, win or ever winning or not. Let me tell you, the victory has already been done. It was won on the cross. Jesus has the keys to death and hell. He has the keys to the grave. We don't have to worry about those things because we will live for an eternity. If we are a believer in Jesus Christ, we're going to spend an eternity with Him. He says He's went to prepare a place for us. And if He goes to prepare a place, He will come again and receive us unto Himself. But Satan has a place. You know who prepared that place? God prepared it for him and his demons. God prepared it for him and his followers. Where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, where there is no good thing. Folks, I want us to understand that we need to be like verse 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Not the will of man, what the will of the Lord is. We will never understand the will of the Lord until we stand in the Scripture. Until we listen, until we watch, until we walk. And it's not going to be an easy walk, folks. We're going to need help. We're going to need strengthening from one another. As we stand this morning and we get ready to sing hymn number uh, 13. As we get ready to sing hymn number 13, the altar is open. Where are you standing today? Where do we stand? I know that we send out some stuff on uh, uh, Facebook and we send out little funny things and little clips and little cuts. But if you're honest in your heart, where do you stand with the Lord? As long as we stand with Him, we'll not stand against Him.
Let's stand together and sing hymn number 13. The altar is open. Peace be to this congregation. God's grace shine upon you. May his love dwell within you. And may his word fill our heart as we go this week. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.